It's Monday, April 24. In the headlines, government working to provide 70,000 housing solutions. In business news, ECLAC predicting 1.2% economic growth in 2023. In regional news, nations fall short on climate change commitments. Internationally, migrant caravan head to Mexico seeking asylum in the U.S. In sports news, sport minister charges sunshine girls to win big at Vitality Netball World Cup 2023. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the introduction of container homes to the local housing market will result in shorter construction times and affordable rates relative to traditional houses. He made the comment while speaking at a launch ceremony for upcycled container homes being introduced to the market by Kingston Logistics Centre Limited. KLC currently offers six options, which include one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom units ranging from $2.5 million to $12.5 million. According to Mr. Holness, working to provide suitable housing solutions, the identification of lands in proximity to infrastructure is one of the greatest challenges. However, he says the National Housing Trust has pledged to deliver 40,000 of the 70,000 solutions and 35,000 of these are at different stages of development. The Civil Service Establishment General Order 2023 has been approved by the House of Representatives. The Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, led the discussion explaining that the order outlines the reorganization of ministries and departments and consequently the creation of new posts. The major changes to be effected in the Civil Service Establishment General Order of 2023 includes the establishment of 127 new posts spread across the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information to enhance the human resource management function of the Division of School Services. This will increase the capacity to better articulate the policies and programs which will allow for more work efficiency and overall improvement in human resource management services to teachers and non-academic staff. According to the finance minister, some 1,147 posts were created, 460 posts upgraded, 175 posts reclassified, 766 posts retitled, 6 posts regraded. The Department of Correctional Services was also facing challenges including inadequate staff, prevention of the entry of prohibited articles into correctional centers, and an increase in population across 11 correctional institutions, seven of which are adult and four juvenile. With the amendments made to sections of the Corrections Act to empower the department and the courts to deal with the problem of trafficking of prohibitive articles, as well as strengthening of the rehabilitation division to absorb the correctional services production holding limited functions, Approval was given for the creation of 117 new posts and the upgrading and retitling of additional posts to strengthen and streamline the rehabilitation division's functions. 214 posts were created out of the need for more personnel with several government agencies, including the new Revenue Protection Division. This new division will work alongside the Ministry of Finance in the achievement and maintenance of debt and fiscal sustainability. The additional staffing is expected to improve the development and execution of policies associated with public fiscal management, uh, improve the ability to address multiple issues at once, cause a greater alignment of competencies and skills, authorities, management process that will enable the business process to operate more effectively, and four, provide autonomy and resources to these departments in effecting their mandate more efficiently. The Special Committee of the National Road Safety Council, NRSC, is working to complete its review of the regulations accompanying the new Road Traffic Act over the next two months. The committee was set up to review complaints and suggestions concerning the regulations. 
In February, Prime Minister Andrew Holness asked the NRSC to conduct a review of the regulations following criticisms from several quarters regarding certain provisions in the Act. One of the more pressing areas of concern for the public was the requirement for operators of public passenger vehicles to have a child seat to transport children under 12 years old. Upon completion, the report will then be submitted to Cabinet for final decision on the comments. Our world as we know it is in peril due to the actions of many. The mismanagement of our environment has and continues to have serious consequences on the ecological system, a plight which many are still unaware of. But there are those who work to inform educate and actively do their part to stem the tide as we hear in this special two-part report from pbcj's news correspondent melvin pennant over the weekend the environmental group earth ambassadors set its sights on a beach in port maria st mary for their second staging of beach cleanup activities against the context of the environmental degradation location Paji Beach, Port Maria, St. Mary. Activity, beach cleanup. This is the second installment of Earth Ambassadors initiative to clean up the beach. The community has welcomed them. And the last time we were here, the beach was way more dirtier. The impact is evident. As you can see, we have a lot of supporters. Everybody out in their numbers, all white, blue and green, shows the petite ambassadors. That's our kids that are enrolled in our Junior Ambassador Program. It's a really nice day, it's sunny, the sky is blue, and we're excited to keep the beach clean as always. This environmental group have been consistent in their efforts since their inception. Director of Earth Ambassadors, Dr. Andrea Clayton was on hand to give her views on the happenings. So this is our second um, cleanup with the Paget community. We did our first in June of 2020, um, in the middle of COVID, and now we're back to do our post cleanup assessment. Because what we are about is not just to go into our community and to do a cleanup and to leave, but we are about empowering that community to take care of itself, to become more sustainable. So over these three years, we have been working with the Apache community to empower its citizens so they can own this beach. Councillor and caretaker for the Islington Division, Dennis Lecky, fully endorsed the undertaking and gave his reasons why. The moment I saw the flyer coming around and heard about the activity that was planned for today with the Earth Ambassadors, I said that my family and I, as well as our businesses, have to be a part of this initiative because it's worthwhile. You know, the, the, the Paget Beach itself serves not only the Paget community, you know, but Cox Street, Frontier, um, all the way up to Baileysville, Sunnyside, even persons from Islington and as far as even Galena come down and use this beach. So it's very near and dear to my heart because I grew up in this community. I went to Port Mara Primary School, which is like about a five minute walk from here. So, you know, this, this is something very, very important. Time now for the business report with Danita Rodney. Marked by low growth in economic activity and global trade, the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, is predicting that regional economies will grow by 1.2% this year. According to ECLAC, although inflationary pressures have slowed, monetary policy rates are expected to remain high and limited throughout 2023 in the main developed economies. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Friday, April 21, the U.S. dollar sold for an average of $153.83, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $118.93, the pound sterling traded for $191.71, and the euro sold for $171.98. In GSC trading, the GSC index advanced by 275 points. The Junior Market Index advanced by 20 points. The Combined Market Index advanced by 448 points. And the All Jamaican Composite Index advanced by 1,723 points. 
Overall market activity resulted from trading in 99 stocks of which 54 advanced, 31 declined, and 14 traded firm. Stocks advanced for 13A Student Living Jamaica Limited, Access Financial Services Limited, and CAC 2000 Limited. Stocks declined for AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, Barita Investments Limited, and Blue Power Group Limited. Trading firm were Berger Paints Jamaica Limited, Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited, and Caribbean Producers Jamaica Limited. The overall volume leaders were Trans Jamaican Highway Limited, JMMB Group Limited 7.50%, and Jamaica Boilers Group with over 2 million units. In regional stocks, in Trinidad and Tobago, Calypso Macro Index Fund posted 400 shares. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Government of Barbados Bonds Series I was a volume leader with over 200,000 shares. They were followed by Goddard Enterprises Limited, which traded over 4,000 shares. In regional business, trade and cooperation was the focus for the Indian Minister of External Affairs on his official three-day trip to Guyana and countries within the Caribbean community. More from Newsroom Guyana. The Indian Minister of External Affairs, Subramaniam Jai Shankar, is on a nine-day visit to the Latin American Caribbean region, and he's spending his first few days in Guyana. He arrived on Thursday night, and on Friday held talks with foreign ministers of the Caribbean community. According to a tweet from Minister Jai Shankar's official Twitter account, CARICOM leaders engaged him on wide-ranging sectoral cooperation, including in trade and the economy, agriculture and food security, health, energy, infrastructure, ICT and e-governance, development partnerships in capacity building, higher education and culture. The two sides also exchanged views on vital issues of climate change and disaster resilience, counter-terrorism, reformed multilateralism and closer cooperation at multilateral fora. Following these wide-ranging discussions, India and CARICOM will meet subsequently to advance work and a second Joint Commission meeting will be held later this year. In international business, home goods retailer Bed Bath & Beyond has filed for bankruptcy after failing to secure funds to stay afloat. More in the Reuters report. The big box store, which shot to popularity in the 1990s as a go-to shopping destination for wedding registries and those with new and growing families, has seen demand drop off in recent years as its merchandising strategy to sell more store-branded products fizzled. Last year, the business switched strategies, instead bringing in more national brands that shoppers might recognize. But it wasn't enough. The company reported a loss of nearly $400 million after sales plunged by a third for the quarter that ended last November. Bed Bath & Beyond filed for bankruptcy in a New Jersey court the filing lists both its estimated assets and liabilities in the range of $1 billion and $10 billion. The company added that its 360 Bed Bath & Beyond and 120 Bye Bye Baby stores and websites will remain open and continue serving customers as it starts efforts to affect the closure of its retail locations. In market data for oil, oil prices were steady as concern over rising interest rates, the global economy and the outlook for fuel demand were balanced by the prospect of tightening supplies. Brent crude slipped 22 cents to $81.44 the barrel and West Texas Intermediate Crude was down 13 cents at $77.74. And that was the business report on PVCJ. I'm Denita Rodney. In regional news, a director of the Climate Analytics Caribbean, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has indicated that many nations have fallen short in their commitments to lower and mitigate their carbon footprints. Terran Brown Campbell has the details in this report. The latest assessment report of the Paris Agreement's Intergovernmental Panel on climate change is very sobering. This is the way Director of Climate Analytics Caribbean, Rowana Haynes, described the report. According to the IPCC, we have two gaps. We have a gap in terms of what countries have said they will do in the context of their nationally determined contributions. Those, um, those actions that have been communicated fall drastically short in every way. She noted the second gap 
is in implementation of those national contributions. We are very much off track in terms of being able to limit global warming to within one and a half degrees Celsius. In fact, we are on track for warming of about three degrees Celsius. In a best case scenario, if we can address the implementation gap, if countries even did what they said they were going to do, we could get it down to 2.7 degrees Celsius. But this in itself is still a disaster. Ms. Haynes outlined the effect of this rise in temperature on the planet. It will trigger events that we cannot reverse, such as sea level rise. We will continue to lose coastlines. It will change life as we know it on the planet. And this is at one and a half degrees Celsius. At two degrees Celsius, it is a virtual certainty that we will lose all coral reefs globally. The Climate Analytics Caribbean Director made her comments at the organization's Islands All In launch on Friday. Terry Ann Brown Campbell, TTT News. In Barbados, Professor Avanish Prasad, climate envoy for Barbados' Prime Minister Miriam Motley, has warned countries currently not deemed as climate vulnerable could very well see themselves being classified as such in the future if the world does not change. The United Nations has, 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 um, has study has shown that uh, the, the countries that lie between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, 15 degrees on either side of the equator, are uh, the most climate vulnerable, are experiencing climate-related uh, costs that are four times greater than what people are experiencing outside of that area. Um, it represents 40% of the world, 3.2 billion people. So we can easily align ourselves with this group. They're experiencing a challenge we're experiencing. Some of them include large landlocked countries but they're experiencing many of the issues we're experiencing. And the world will stand up and listen to 40% of its population to drive that money to the most vulnerable. If the world recognizes that there is a water scarcity problem in the world, we need a water scarcity vulnerability index to drive that money there. If the world recognizes that there's a gender violence problem, as there is, including in many SIDS, there needs to be an index of gender violence, which will drive that money uh, there. So I think that's the way we deal with multiple vulnerabilities. According to a report from the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, Guyana remains on track to record significant economic growth this year of 37.2%. Though countries within the Latin American Caribbean region are experiencing persistent economic challenges, the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean ECLAC projects a 37.2% growth rate for Guyana this year. But this positive growth rate comes as all the subregions are expected to record lower economic growth this year compared to 2022. It was noted that South America will grow by 0.6% in 2023. The group made up of Central America and Mexico will expand by 2% and the Caribbean without Guyana will grow by 3.5%. These rates are all lower than last year. Importantly, however, with Guyana's growth included, the Caribbean's economic growth is pegged at 9.1%. ECLAC offered some explanations for the lower growth rates expected this year. In Caribbean economies specifically, it said the growth rate is largely attributed to inflation, which is simply the rate of increase of prices over a period of time. Because of the increased cost of goods, ECLAC said consumption of goods and the cost to produce those goods will be negatively affected. Those factors have a negative impact on the competitiveness of exports, both of goods as well as tourism, a major revenue earner for Caribbean countries. Even so, Ghana's nascent oil and gas economy and spin-off business opportunities continue to contribute to the country's high levels of economic growth. Ghana's 37.2% growth rate is the highest in the region. The second highest growth rate is expected in Antigua and Barbuda at 9.5%, then in the Dominican Republic at 4.6% and Panama also 4.6%. ECLAC also warned that additional global challenges, such as the Ukraine-Russia crisis, could further impact countries' growth rates. Reporting for the newsroom, I am Fishani Ragbir.
In international news, more than 3,000 people are marching north through Mexico trying to reach the U.S. border. The group said to be one of several large groups is not trying only to seek asylum, but they are also demanding justice for migrants who died in a fire at a detention center last month. More from Al Jazeera. They have walked long distances through some of the harshest conditions in the world. No matter how difficult their journey, these migrants marching across Mexico say they're determined to stop only once they reach the United States. We don't have any other alternative than leaving from here and to keep moving forward. We won't give up. All of us want to get to the United States to fight for a better future for my daughter here and another one I left in Honduras. Fleeing violence and poverty in Central America, thousands of migrants walk together for safety to reach Mexico each year. We have to move and keep aiming for our dream because I left with a dream. My wife is four months pregnant. This is my dream, to arrive in the United States and give it all to my daughter. This group has mostly Venezuelans who flew to Panama or Costa Rica. Then it's the long journey north, on foot. They're aiming to reach Mexico City in around 10 days. But this is not just a search for better opportunities. These people are angry about a fire at a detention center in Mexico last month that killed 40 migrants. Now they carry crosses and banners to remember those who'll never see the U.S. Now we have decided to move forward in this journey because of the 40 people who died there who were set on fire. The officials are murderers. They don't want the migrants from our countries and we want justice. Even if they make it to the U.S. border, entering the United States is not easy. Tough immigration policies are making it harder for migrants to claim asylum. And after spending days and weeks on the road, these children and their families may well be told to go back. Andrea van Beek, Al Jazeera. Australia has launched its biggest defence shakeup in sports with just 100 days to go before the Vitality Netball World Cup 2023. The Sunshine Girls are going full speed ahead in preparing for their long-awaited showdown. In anticipation of an exciting playoff, President of Netball Jamaica, Trisha Robinson, said a provisional team of 23 players will be selected in May. Maya Chung has more from their recent media launch held on Friday, April 21. Subsequently, the final team of 15 players will be named in June before the games begin. The competition will run between July 28 to August 6 in Cape Town, South Africa, and will be the first to take place on the continent of Africa. 16 teams will duel, but only one will be crowned as champion in netball's most prestigious event. Ms. Robinson said that the Jamaicans are hopeful that the current selection will dominate the courts in Cape Town, South Africa. She added that the Sunshine Girls have worked hard and shown tremendous dedication over the past few years. The president of Netball Jamaica, Trisha Robinson, revealed the new uniforms at the media launch. The support team, in collaboration with our Sunshine Girls and our uniform partner, Gilbert, came together and designed our World Cup kit. So there we have our main gear in the yellow, the Jamaican colors, and the alternate dress in the black. Jamaica is ranked fourth in the sport globally by World Netball, the international governing body for the sport. This ranking automatically qualified the senior netball team for the 2023 World Cup. In addition to getting the Sunshine Girls in shape, Netball Jamaica is laboring to secure funding for the World Cup. Approximately $51 million is needed to get the team to South Africa. So far, $25 million has been secured through sponsorship. Lead sponsor for the team is Beryllium Limited and other main sponsors include the National Baking Company, Ray and & Nephew and Separate Limited. Sports Minister Olivia Grange had this to say. And I wish you all the best and this is a special year for us. We will wrap up our one-year celebration of our 60th anniversary in August, on August 6th at the National Stadium. You're going to be out there working towards bringing home the gold, 
winning the World Cup, along with our other women's team in football, and we are going to, as the backbone of the Jamaican society, women, Jamaican women, we're going to, this year is our year. For the news on PBCJ, I am Maya Chung. And that's the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thanks so much for watching. And do remember, we are the People's Station.